In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can work with numeric input from the user. In other words, how we can do calculations with number data. Before I do, I'm going to build myself a simple little interface with a couple of text boxes and a button. Notice how I've been naming the controls as I go along. This will make the code easier to understand. The first thing I'd like to do is add together two numbers that the user types onto the form. So I'll start by declaring a couple of variables. Remember, the data type integer means a whole number. I'm going to declare another variable to store the result of the calculation. And now I'm going to capture the data that the user types into those text boxes. Adding these together couldn't be simpler. I result equals I number one plus I number two. Let's output the result and see if it works. Twelve plus five is seventeen. Let's try something else. Let's subtract one number from the other. I result equals I number one minus I number two. I'll just borrow that message box statement and we'll run the program again. So that's the two numbers added together. And that's what we get when we subtract 5 from 12. What about multiplication? To multiply two numbers together, we use an asterisk. That's the multiplication symbol when you're programming. 12 plus 5 is 17. 12 minus 5 is 7 and 12 times 5 is 60. Bit of copying and pasting to speed things up. To divide one number by another, use a forward slash. So this reads as I number 1 divided by I number 2. 12 plus 5 is 17, 12 minus 5 is 7, 12 times 5 is 60, and 12 divided by 5 is 2. Well, not quite, but remember we're working with integers here. We're working with whole numbers. When I divide one integer by another and store the result in an integer variable, VB is automatically going to round the result either up or down. Let's improve on this. Instead of using integer variables, I'm going to use a real number type. Let's use a double. I'm also going to change the naming I've used here. DBL for a double. Strictly speaking, it doesn't matter what I call these variables, but I want the names to be meaningful, and I want the names to reflect the data type. Let's see what we get this time. Same as before, 12 plus 5 is 17, 12 minus 5 is 7, 12 times 5 is 60, but 12 divided by 5 is 2.4. That makes more sense. Just to be clear about the way a variable works, I'm multiplying two numbers together here, and I'm storing the result in this variable called dbl result. When I perform a second calculation, I'm storing the result in the same variable. 
What's happening is I'm overwriting the existing value in DBL result. I lose the value which was generated by the first calculation. When I do the third calculation, I overwrite the value inside DBL result again, so I lose the result of the second calculation. By the time my program comes to an end, this contains the result of the first number divided by the second number. If I wanted to keep the result of each of these calculations, then I should have declared four separate variables. These are called arithmetic operators. These are the basic operations that we might want to perform with numbers. There are a couple more. Let me show you them. That's the carré symbol, which is normally above the number 6 on your keyboard. And what it means is raise to the power of. So it's going to raise number 1 to the power of number 2. 12 plus 5, 12 minus 5, 12 times 5, 12 divided by 5, and 12 to the power of 5. That's 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 times 12. Another useful operator is integer division. I'm going to use a backslash instead of a forward slash. In some programming languages, you would use the word div. In fact, the pseudocode that you see on most exam papers will use the word div. In Visual Basic, we use a backslash. Let's take a look. That's the effect of using a backslash instead of a forward slash. 12 is being divided by 5, but only the whole number part of the result is being kept. 12 divided by 5 is 2, with 2 remainder. We're ignoring the remainder. Let's try 15 and 4. 15 plus 4 is 19. 15 minus 4 is 11. 15 times 4 is 60. 15 divided by 4 is 3.75. That's 15 raised to the power of 4. And that's 15 divided by 4, ignoring the remainder. 4 goes into 15 three times. The last arithmetic operator that I'd like to show you now is mod. Number 1, mod number 2. Mod is the remainder after whole number division. Let's see what this does. Let's go with 24 and 9 this time. I'll just move the form across so you can see the code as well. 24 plus 9 is 33. 24 minus 9 is 15. 24 multiplied by 9 is 216. 24 divided by 9 is 2.6 recurring. The number of decimal places you can see there is governed by the data type. 24 raised to the power of 9 is this rather large number. 24 divided by 9 using integer division is 2. 9 goes into 24 twice. And 9 goes into 24 twice with 6 remaining. That's what mod is giving me. It's the remainder after whole number division. Let me finish with a word of warning. I'm going to run this program again, but I'm not going to enter any data. I'm going to leave these two text boxes empty. Straight away, I have an error message. Conversion from string to type double is not valid. This tells me something about what's going on behind the scenes. Let's stop the program and put a breakpoint on this line. When you type something into a text box, it's actually a string. Notice here, text equals 57 in double quotes. When this line of code executes, VB will automatically convert the string 57 
into a number. You can see dBL number 1 has got a zero in it at the moment. That's the initial value of any numeric variable until you assign something else to it. Step through the code. The text box contained 57, but the variable contains 57. Behind the scenes, Visual Basic is automatically converting the string into a double, because it can. But notice that my second text box contains a zero length string, a pair of double quotes with nothing in between them. It's a string, but it just doesn't have any length. And when this line of code executes, VB will attempt to convert that zero length string into a number, but of course it can't. And my program has crashed. This is what we call a runtime error. The program crashed while it was running. It crashed at runtime. Another name for a runtime error is an exception. So you can see here I have an unhandled exception. I'll talk more about runtime error handling or exception handling in a later video. But for now, with this program, we just have to expect the user to do the right thing, not to leave any of the text boxes blank.